On Friday afternoon, it was announced that Marco Gonzalez would not be joining the team in Arlington for their series against the Rangers, but rather he would be staying in Seattle to undergo testing on his left forearm. With Marco Slaughter to be pitching on Saturday, it was announced that Brian Wu, the Mariners' number six overall prospect, would be starting in his spot. Wu was recently named the Seattle Mariners Minor League Pitcher of the Month, having pitched 27 innings over 5 starts, allowing 7 earned runs, with 32 strikeouts, 8 walks, a 2.33 ERA, and a 1.00 whip. Wu was also named the Mariners Minor League Pitcher of the Month in April, after posting a 1.59 ERA, with 27 strikeouts to 4 walks in 4 April starts. Swung on and missed, he got him with high heat, Ryan Wu. I've looked around and seen that there's some comps on Brian Wu's fastball to Freddie Peralta and Joe Ryan. They released the ball around 5 feet off of the pitcher's mound, have about 15 inches of vertical break, and around 10 inches of run at 94 miles an hour. And while that may be true for Joe Ryan as his average fastball is at 93 miles an hour, Freddie Peralta's average fastball is around 95 miles an hour, but Brian Wu sits in the mid to upper 90s and has reached 99 in the past. Comparing each of their release points, you can see that they come from around the same approach angle with a lower three-quarter arm slot, and Wu and Peralta have a very similar follow-through. Lance, who's a player development analyst, also notes that Wu has a slider that looks like a sweeper at around 80 miles an hour with 15 inches of break to go along with the two-seam and change-up that have around the same shape, but of course the change-up is slower. But Wu has said that his bread and butter is the fastball. And it's waved at and missed a high fastball at 95. So let's look into who Brian Wu is and how he got to this point. But before we do, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And if you're a fan of baseball or the Seattle Mariners. Brian Wu attended Alameda High School and was the class of 2018. Alameda is a small island just south of Oakland. Brian was not a highly touted prospect coming out of high school, as he was 831 in the country for right-handed pitching and 84th in the state of California. But the reason for this is that, well, he just didn't really pitch until his junior year of high school, which is a very similar story to another guy in the Mariners rotation, Bryce Miller. Wu's high school team needed more pitching, so he moved from playing in the infield to working innings on the mound. And he would go on to attend Cal Poly, Cal Poly is near San Luis Obispo, which is a little north of Los Angeles, and is the same school that another guy in the Mariners system, Taylor Dollard, attended. And they were actually in the same rotation for a couple years as Dollard was just a year older than Wu. Wu had a rough go his freshman year at Cal Poly. His sophomore year was 2020, which was COVID, so it was a shortened year. And then 2021, his year was shortened again because he had to get Tommy John surgery. He only started in 6 of the 31 games he pitched in throughout college, and due to the reasons I mentioned before, he had bloated numbers at a 6.36 ERA, a 1.731 whip, and an 11.6 strikeouts per 9 with a 4 walks per 9. April 2021, he got Tommy John surgery, but the Mariners scouting department had seen enough, as they would draft Wu in the 6th round of the 2021 MLB Draft. As you'd imagine, coming off of Tommy John's surgery in 2022, his first year in professional baseball, he was on an innings limit, but across three different levels in rookie ball, high A, and double A, he pitched 57 innings to the tune of a 4.11 ERA, a 13.3 strikeouts per nine, and a 3.5 walks per nine. And as I mentioned before, his fastball in 2022 was up to 99 miles an hour. And here's Brian talking about where he was at heading into the spring of 2023. Oh, it's been a great time. Um, it's been really nice, really, to, to just to, to get to meet all the guys, get to meet the staff, kind of get acquainted with everybody. Um, taking it kind of one day at a time. I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm a little behind throwing just because of Fall League and, and took some time off afterwards. So kind of making my way up to, to throwing live and throwing in games. But um, I mean, I've loved every minute so far, hanging out with, with everybody, hanging out in the clubhouse, just, just meeting everybody. Um, I've enjoyed every minute. It's been really great. We got a lot of, a core group of a lot of young guys. Um, obviously you mentioned George and Logan. Um, Matt Brash is here. Um, so we have we have them. Obviously can kind of go back and forth, pick their brains a little bit, try to talk to some of the older guys as well. 
Um, but it's nice to definitely have a couple of those younger guys that you know were, were in your shoes not too long ago and um, you can definitely bounce ideas off of them and um, it's been really great to have them around, definitely. You know, obviously the rehab process is so up and down. You've got so many things that you go through that you don't really expect, um, just kind of the way that rehab goes. So I think coming into, you know, last season after getting out of rehab and then now um, this season, it's, it's definitely helped honestly to have that experience to kind of always have that to fall back on and kind of slow down make sure that i'm taking it day by day not getting too ahead of myself so honestly i think as difficult as it was it definitely was a, a blessing in disguise to go through that i mean it's just i think it's just little things obviously the the fastball has kind of always been my bread and butter so making sure that i stay on top of that making sure that i'm you know stay on top of the velo and the shapes making sure that those are all consistent um, the change up has come along really well um, kind of didn't have great feel for it, honestly, for a couple of years, but through the fall league, um, developed really well. Just kind of just clicked there, and it's um, you know picked up a little bit. And then uh, the sliders developing as well. Um, it's just a consistency with it, making sure that throwing it for strikes, I have a, a shape that I like and that um, you know works with the rest of my stuff. So it's really just continuing to develop the little things and making sure that every day I'm focused on those things. But. Um, overall, I'm really happy about where I'm at. He was happy with where he was at heading into the 2023 season, and now everyone in the Mariners organization is just as happy. He has been dominant this year. So far in 44 innings pitched in double A, he's rocking to the tune of a 2.05 ERA with a 12.1 strikeouts per nine and a 2.5 walks per nine. Game ends tomorrow. Swing and a miss, the 2-2. Lewis gone on strikes. He has really had to work his way back from Tommy John surgery took a while in limited innings granted to get a feel for pitching again. Great breaking ball. Leaves Andy Pajes just staring straight ahead. A pitch, got him. And on May 11th of this year, he took a perfect game into the seventh inning, ending the game pitching seven innings, allowing just two hits, no earned runs, no walks, and striking out seven. And in that game, 71.6% of the pitches he threw were strikes. And up to this point, it was just a question of which prospect would be next if there was an injury that popped up, Emerson Hancock or Brian Wu. Emerson has had an inflated ERA and inflated walks per nine so far this year in AA, but the real question with Brian Wu was his health and the amount of innings that he's thrown so far in the minor leagues. He's set to face off against Andrew Heaney and the Texas Rangers in Arlington tomorrow, so make sure to tune in and check out Brian. Thank you for watching, and make sure to let me know your thoughts on the call up of Brian Wu, and we'll see you next time. All right, guys, goodbye, Zondi. Don't forget it. Stop it.